is my take on the much needed crosscut sled with interchangeable inserts. So let's get started with the build. Out of some 18mm hardwood ply, I cut the base to size and ripped up four strips that will be used for the front and rear fence. While the fence was set, I ripped up some 12mm ply that will be used for the interchangeable inserts. I wanted to mark and lay out exactly where all the runners, T-track and cutouts go, just to be sure that all is good. Drilling a hole to accept the jigsaw blade and rough cutting out the blank for the insert base. Cut up some strips of MDF and with some double sided tape stuck them down to be used as a guide with a flush trim bit. Flip the base over, cleaned up all the edges square and flush and removed the guides. I needed to create a rebate to house the bottom insert so I placed a guide on and with a router taking shallow cuts with each pass machined away. When both sides were done the corners were cleaned out with a chisel. I decided to make a bunch of inserts up, a few spare for the inevitable stuff up. Cutting the base insert up at the table saw, both length and width, until I had a neat fit. A matching rebate was needed on the base inserts. I cut these out at the table saw until I had a bunch of inserts ready to go. All the inserts were tuned up with a block and a rebate plane until they were all a neat fit. Placing the first insert in, I marked where I wanted the countersunk bolts and T-nuts to go, dimpled with an awl and spot drilling through both the insert and the base. Now I could place each insert in one by one, flip over the sled, pick up on the spotted holes and spot drill all the inserts. Loving the opportunity to get next to the heater, I headed over to the drill press. Drilled the clearance holes for the bolts, countersinking, ensuring all bolts were well below the surface. With a force and a bit, I drilled a recess for the T-nut flange. I threw hole and pressed each nut in with a G-clamp. Placing the insert in and bolting it down. Feeling confident that this sled might actually work, I measured up the miter slots so I could make the runners, cut up a test piece, then proceeded to cut the strips out of a material known as EcoDeck, a bamboo and recycled plastic composite. I thought I might give it a go as it seems to be quite a stable product. At the drill press, I set up a temporary fence, drilled the through holes and countersunk. Dropping some washers into the miter slots to hold up the runners and having the backs covered in double sided tape, I could now use the table saw fence as a guide to press the base down squarely. Having flipped the sled over, drilling centre of the runners with a vex bit and driving the screws home then flush trimming the excess. After a test fit, some guides got clamped on and two trenches were formed to accept some T-track. Cutting up some T-track old school style, marking and shaping a radius to suit the cutter and whacking in place with a knockometer. Having the T-track cut short at one end allows you to get access for your T-bolt. Once again, a VEX bit was used to find center and the screws were driven home. It pays to check the screw length like I didn't kind of pop through the bottom. Clown moment number one. At this stage, I was getting tired and about to call it a day, but my wife and kids encouraged me to stay out of the house and pursue my hobby. So I turned my attention to the front and rear fence. I glued up the four strips 
seasoned with salt and clamped up to a spirit level in an attempt to keep them as straight as possible. While the glue was drying, I cut to length the front and rear insert plates and holders, putting a 45 on each end until I had a stack done. Clamping an insert to the centre of both the front and rear fence and using some painter's tape to act as shim for clearance later, I glued on two fence supports, brad nailed to help locate its position, removed the centre insert and again used the spirit level as a strong back. The fences got cleaned up at the table saw and a trench was put in the rear fence for the T-track. Using a combination of a bandsaw and a disc sander, a radius was put on. All the edges got a round over, so it's nice to the touch. The front fence is not that critical, so it can be glued, clamped and screwed in place. The rear fence where all the action takes place just gets one screw for now in one corner so that it can pivot and can be squared up to the cut. A framing square was used off the table saw fence to give me a rough starting point. I fashioned up a simple block and drove a lag bolt in, smothered it in double sided tape and stuck it on. Now I could make micro adjustments by simply removing the clamp, turning the bolt in or out as needed, and reclamping and taking a test cut. Now came time to make the initial cut. It felt kind of strange cutting your project in half. I threw in an insert and a piece of scrap and took a test cut. Not bad as a starting point. Only having calipers that could measure at 150mm, I cut up some scrap to that size, clamping down and cutting one edge, then flipping over and cutting the opposite edge, and then measuring up across the face at each end. At this point, I was 0.69 out. This meant that my fence needed to come in slightly. The clamp was removed, the bolt adjusted in, and the fence reclamped in position. I repeated the same cutting procedure, flipping the board over, cutting each edge, adjusting the fence, and measuring until I achieved an equal distance between the two faces. All in all, this only took me three attempts. There is this NASA engineer, William Yang, that came up with this awesome five cut method. Basically, you take a board, cut one edge, turn that edge to the fence and repeat. You cut the fifth cut a bit wider and take your measurements across the face at each end. Then do a bunch of math that I always try desperately to avoid. I gave this method a go and with the results I got, I was quite happy. If not, I could have just adjusted my setting block until the desired result. Plus I was a bit relieved that I didn't have to do any math. Now I could screw down the rest of the fence from underneath. To make up the interchangeable inserts, the front and rear inserts were glued and clamped in position and the sled flipped over. Drove in some screws and quickly removed the inserts in case of glue squeeze out. Some of the inserts needed a fine tune until a neat fit was achieved. Now I could set my blade to full height and make my first zero clearance insert.
Remove that insert, plonked in another blank and bolted it in. Setting my blade to 45 and taking a cut, likewise for the dado stack, with a few spare blanks for future blade types. I drilled a hole at the front fence side of the insert to act as a finger pull and so that I don't mess up the insert orientation. Now that I finally had a crosscut sled, I cut up some blocks that were laminated together and cleaned up, using a rule as a spacer and screwed it on. As long as you keep your fingers to the outside of the block, you will always keep your digits which are needed to down those Doritos. Deciding to make up two different types of stop blocks, a spline was made that was neatly fitted to the T-track. A matching slot was cut and the spline glued in. To accept the T-bolt, a hole was drilled and a notch created. For the positive stop, dowels were used with way too much glue. For the flip stop, basically a box joint was cut, a hole drilled, fingers rounded over and a bolt and lock nut installed. Everything got cleaned up at the belt sander and a favourite coat of my finish applied. Wax paste for the underside of the sled. I'm pretty stoked with the results. For my first sled, I have a choice of stops, hold downs and interchangeable zero clearance inserts. So if you feel like making a sled, get out there and make and create. Until next time, thanks for watching.